Hi everyone, this is Dr. Patty McCartney. I am a board certified naturopathic doctor, an animal naturopathic doctor, and a licensed Texas attorney. I want to thank y'all for joining me today as I discuss the topic of counsel self-care, a holistic approach to mental health and wellness. I've included a definition of holistic health, which is defined as a relative state in which one is able to function well physically, mentally, socially, and spiritually in order to express the full range of one's unique potentialities within the environment in which one is living. I've also included a description of naturopathic medicine for those who may not be familiar. Naturopathy or naturopathic medicine is a natural health care profession emphasizing prevention, support, and optimal health through the use of all natural non-invasive therapies and natural substances that encourage an individual's inherent self-healing process. Naturopathic doctors recognize that the human body has the inherent ability to recover from the constant assaults by the environment, by lifestyle, and improper or bad dietary habits, taking into account an individual's physical, mental, emotional, genetic, environmental, social, spiritual, and other factors Naturopathy encourages healthy choices and the elimination of underlying causes of illness and aids individuals to take charge of their own well-being. In naturopathic medicine, we understand that each individual is their own best doctor. I also want to begin with a little bit of background. So, mental health concerns among American attorneys were observed in two major studies, one beginning in 2016 and then another in 2020. The findings were quite startling. According to the studies, at least one in five lawyers will develop a substance or mental health disorder. Also, the studies found that anywhere from 40 to 70 percent of all disciplinary matters involve chemical dependency. Women are experiencing meaningfully worse mental health than men and are drinking more hazardously, according to these studies. Also, the legal profession has the highest rate of major depression of any occupation. And roughly half of practicing attorneys are experiencing symptoms of depression and anxiety. So, what causes stress and anxiety? There are the external factors, and then there is the perfectionism standard the adversarial-based profession that we practice within, the inability to turn off our thoughts. So often we find ourselves reliving the day's events to the point to where they form a loop in our brain going around and round. That can cause tremendous stress and even anxiety. And then, of course, there is the win-lose mentality which is at the core of our profession. So next, let's look at the biology of stress and anxiety. When the brain perceives a threat, a stress response system is triggered, which activates a flood of biological responses, resulting in the release of adrenaline and cortisol, the stress hormones. Anxiety has the same physical and biological characteristics of stress. However, the key differences 
are that stress-induced neurotransmitters and hormones remain elevated in the case of anxiety, resulting in repetitive worry or thoughts that cause panic. Anxiety becomes clinically concerning when the feelings persist, even when the threat is gone and when it begins to impact day-to-day functioning and relationships.